Okay, so this video is to answer a question that's raised by the community, by one of the viewers, and the question was by Optimist MS. So, excellent tutorial, keep it up, thanks a lot. Um, is it possible to save the animation as a movie file or AVI file? Um, well, I had a look into this, and after some digging and some experimentation, yes it is, and this is the answer to your question. Um, anybody else has got a question out there, please ask me and I will actually create a video when I get round to it. So I get quite a few questions. Um, Optimus MS, thank you for the replies from the other videos as well. I hope they have helped you. Um, I love people replying, it gives me support and actually a will to actually do these videos and carry on with them, sharing knowledge all the time and that's one of the best things that I can do with the community. So let's see how we can actually solve this problem. If you like this video or any other videos on my channel, please pop over to my Ko-Fi site or Coffee, however you want to pronounce it. And there you can actually support me by dropping me a few pounds, a few francs or dollars, wherever your currency is. All money will be turned back into the show, not just for buying me a coffee, I'll be buying resources and equipment to actually produce and enhance my current videos on that site itself. So I'm going to start from a fresh canvas. Um, I haven't got any panels open at the moment. Um, we're going to be needing these panels in the future, like the Python panel, the report view. Um, but I've closed this down so you can actually see where they are actually in the program. So we're starting from a fresh. So we've no need to go off and search on the internet to find out how to get these panels up. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually create an object on screen to create the animation. So I'm going to go new. And I'm going to go to the object, sorry, the part design. Jump into the part of design, create a body, and create a sketch. And I'm going to stick it on the XY plane as normal. Hit OK. I'm just going to create a simple animation in here, so I just need a single object. So I'm just going to pick, I'm just going to pick a cube, and just going to put that cube in there. Close that, and now I'm back into the part design. I'm going to pad that cube, and I'm just going to leave it at the default of 10 millimeters. So we just want to animate this on the page, and I'm just going to roll this over a bit so we can see the cube so I'm pressing alt um, I'm on touchpad down here touchpad so you can change this to whatever setting you want for your your control I've got I'm using the laptop so I've got it on touchpad so I'll just put a bit of um, rotation in so we can actually see what our, what's actually happened so we've created, created a cube on screen I'm going to go over to the model still in the part design and I'm going to have a look at this body. And you can see the placement of the body here. This is placed it at a, a placement of uh, 001. So that's X, Y, Z. And we can actually change this. We should be able to change this. And I'll move it. Um, I know before in videos I've said about creating this as compound object. So to move it, but in this case, I'm going to go a different route and actually not create it as a compound object. Just leave it as is, because um, the reason why I normally create it as a compound object is because you can actually double click on your object and actually move it in this uh, in here, rather than actually using this these positions. But we don't need to actually move this around via our mouse pointer for this tutorial. So I'm just going to create some basic animation now. So I'm going to jump jump over to the macro. And I'm going to go into macros. So the whole idea is actually to be able to create the animation and actually I'll put the single shots of the animation to a file and actually create that as an AVI. So create a AVI of your animation, which there is no way of doing that in, in FreeCAD unless you know a bit of Python, which I'm going to show you how to now. So I'm going to just go in there and create. I'm going to say, call it animation to AVI. Click on that. 
So there we go. So what I want to do is just move that object across the screen only a little way just to get an idea of, of, of what we're doing. So we've got our blank macro in front of us and we just need to start setting this up. We're going to be using a Pi, Pi side library and using the Qt core from there. And the Qt core holds our timers because we're going to be using the timer to actually progress our animations. What I'm going to do is actually pull in the actual timer itself and set that up. To do that, we create a variable called timer and we associate that to the Qt timer. So that's a new, uh, new instance of the timer. With the timer, we then connect the update function which we have yet to define in the timer.timeout.connect. So what that does, that actually, each time that timer ticks, it will fire that update function. Now, up here, I'm just going to define the update. And then we need to start the timer. So that will actually fire the Qt core Q timer. And each time it fires that, it will actually run this update function, which is in here, which hasn't got actually anything in it at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this across the screen with the position. Now I need to have a few panels open. So if I jump down to view, panels, and the ones that I want are the Python console. So you can see that I've been playing in there quite a bit with this one. Um, it's nice blank. I could actually right click and clear console. That would be the best idea. Okay, so that's there. And also I want, if I go up to here, view, panels, and I want port view. Now I haven't actually spoke about this in uh, previous tutorials, but this is great for actually seeing the output um, in a more clearer way. So I've got these side by side. Um, it does restrict the size of your screen, but we'll work with that. Okay, so anything you do in FreeCAD will appear in the Python console. So anything you change. So this is our route to actually getting this um, object to move. So if we click on the body, and change the placement here. So I'm going to change the placement. So if this placement is closed up, just go down to placement, open it up, and go into position. Open this up, and you can actually change the X and Y. So as you can see, anything that I did with by clicking on the body and changing the placement, it actually appeared down here in this FreeCAD get document unnamed, get object body placement equals, and you can see the two in there and to here. So that's what we need. We need that command there. So we can just copy that in control C to copy that depending on what environment you're in. Right. Okay. So the update, I'm just going to paste that in there. So as you can see, it's indented because it's actually a, um, a function. So I've indented that and we've got that sitting there. So at the moment that will just update the position of that function each time with two we don't really want so I'm going to I want this just to move across the screen so I'm going to place in here um, the y axis isn't it yep so y my speed I'm going to go for y speed equals um, let's say one so that will be the speed that we can actually move across the y axis and also I'm going to create a don't put semicolon in the end, I'm different language game. <laughs> so why why pause? Uh, I'm gonna set this equal to two. And what I need to do is bring these into so I'm gonna actually increase this y pause with the speed each time each iteration. So I need to pull these variables in. Global y speed and y pause. Make sure you get casing right and don't make sure you don't put any white space on the end otherwise you're gonna actually uh, have problems. 
and what we're going to do is go to app placement .app vector where that two is and I'm going to replace that with my pos and before that or after that doesn't matter where I'm just going to play uh, update y pos and I'm going to plus um, plus equal y speed so that increase y pos by how much we got in that speed so it's increasing it by one so that body should actually start moving across the screen now one thing I'm going to do in here as I said in my other videos is timer dot stop if you know all this you can obviously skip it um, to the actual meaty bit is where we actually start taking screenshots so timer dot stop will stop the, stop the timer when we copy this down into our Python console to run it timer dot stop will stop any time that we've got running at the moment we import the core the core set up two variables y speed y pos um, create a function called update pull in y speed and y pos increment y speed uh, <laughs> increment y pos uh, well not increment, well, we always increment in there we add y speed to y pos and then we use this this command there which we copy from our console freecad.getDocumentUnnamed um, so freecad.getDocumentUnnamed get body get object body so and we set the placement for that for y pos which used to be 2 so it just copied y pos into there timer dot it was Set the timer up, QT cord or Q timer, timer dot timeout dot connect, running running the update. So each time it actually ticks, the update is fired, and then we start the timer. Okay, so it's always worth reading through that. So now I'm going to copy, and it's going to fail when I paste it in here. Oh no, it didn't. <laughs> Remember to save your work. There we go, save the work. So saving the work would we'll, we'll just uh, actually stop that from running. Um, I'm going to output what our Y position is. So I'm just gonna use basic print in there. And what you need to do is, uh, I'm gonna put some text in here, position. And I'm going to add now using the function str because I've got convert y, y pos to an str and otherwise to a string, otherwise it will fail. Y pos and then, yep, close the bracket and off we go. So that should be all good. He says, yeah, all good. So I'm just copying this into the clipboard, pasting it. No, it's not good. <laughs> I knew that would happen. So we've got invalid syntax plus equals speed, and why is that? It's probably because print position y pos y, str y pos because I haven't closed the bracket. There we go. Hit enter, and you can see here name YPOS is not defined. And that is because I haven't got a capital P. Learn by our mistakes. There we go. So our position has been updated there. If we jump over here, we can see that our cube has vanished off the, <laughs> off the top of the screen. Right. So Hit timer dot stop. Running that a bit fast. Stop timer. You can see our position stop. This is the reason why we would use the report view. And let's have a look. Position is two. So when we rerun this, it will be reset. And I'm going to just change this speed to zero point. Yeah, zero point one. I've saved that, pasted it in here, and there we go. We can see it actually moving up now. So that's our basic animation done. Ooh, timer dot stop. 
Right, that's done. What we need to do now is actually output some screenshots. Each time this runs, I want to take it, take a screenshot and output it to, output it to a, a directory. And then once I've finished my animation, I want this to automatically take all those screenshots, put them all together, and output it as an AVI. Now this is where I found a way to doing doing this, and it requires a download from the internet called FFmpeg, which allows you to actually create a image from a set of files. It's a it's it's a basic encoding, a small encoding executable that's up on the up on the net. Lots of people use it. It's a great piece. I've used it, uh, great piece of software. I've used it before, so we can use that to actually encode our screenshots. I, I, it was only through the um, the view co the viewer comments that I that I had a deeper look and found out that you actually can screenshot your output. Now, I never knew this, and I can't even remember where it is now. Um, tools save picture. So if I hit that. What this will do is actually take a screenshot of this active window. And if we look at it, I haven't looked in this extending yet. There we go. So we can actually see that we've got width and height that's going to output. And we've got aspect ratio and the background. So we can actually, it's actually take a screenshot of what we've got here. And the background, we can change the color of the background. And if I actually did this, and I'll set it to test as well, that's my previous test. Uh, let's change it to black. So 907.149. Save that. Yes, I want to replace it. And you can see our command down here. It's actually output a a um, command to a screen. So we can actually use that in our Python code. So if I grab that, do I want to out? Do I want to output to black? Oh, that'll do for now. So I grab that command and look at our code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function. And I'm going to call the function save. And in here, I am just going to put the command that I copied just in here, just to save it there. And also, I'm going to put it in a directory called temp, because I have already created a batch file to actually do the an additional task that I need to do. Don't have to worry about that at the moment. I'm going to supply the batch file on my GitHub. And I'll give you a link to that. Now, now we've got that on screen. We're just going to change this to my location that I want to place it. Um, I'm going to leave it as test.bitmap. Now, actually, I'm going to output it as JPEG. And I'm going to put in C temp slash test.jpg. Now I'm just going to pop over to my C temp. I've already got a video in here that I tried before. I tested it with, so I'm going to get rid of that. If I can. These two files I'm going to get into, which I'm just going to move these to a separate directory. So just ignore these for the time being. We will talk about these, and these will be available on my site. Um, ignore me. There we go. Chuck those in there. And that one. Okay. So, other than the directory, it's a blank directory. Matter of fact, um, yeah, I'm just going to leave that like that. So that's a blank, di blank directory at the moment. So what we're going to do is actually output to this directory. So I'm outputting to, to C temp. Now, obviously, each time I hit save, what I'm going to do is, is run save at the end of our movement. So in here, tab over, I'm just going to call save, and that will save. Each time this is run, it will output it to a directory using our GUI active document, active view, save image. Okay. So I will need to... Also, I need to keep a um, frame count so I can actually output this as a sequence. 
And in here, I'm going to place a, another variable called frame count. So that's zero. And from here, frame count, I'm just going to increment it with plus plus. Now, save image. I'm going to come in here. Actually, I'm going to create another variable up the top here. Oh, first things first, global. I'm bringing frame count. Otherwise, we won't be able to use it. That's there. I'm going to create a, another variable called file name. File name. That's not a reserve word. No, it shouldn't be. So file name equals, and I'm going to dump this into that file name. Yeah, just dump that into the file name. And put a file name in there. Uh, give it the file name. Now this is a bit at the end we need to change. So I'm going to put, we've got c slash temp um, plus str and then frame count. Capital C and frame count. Kind of doing this on the fly. I'm trying to remember what I did before. So please bear with me. And I don't want to test. I just want dot JPEG in there. So that will actually go through and set up a file name called C kind of slash temp. First time in there, zero dot JPEG, and it will go through each time and actually output those. So that I believe should be okay. Now, one thing that I need to do. Is that I need to check the frame count to make sure it's it's um, below a certain number of frames. So what I mean by that is I need to stop the timer at a certain point. Otherwise, I'm going to have loads of frames. I'm going to have to start typing in here timer dot stop. Um, so if I want this to run for a certain amount of time, I can actually have this configurable. So I'm going to put max frame count and just set that for the time being to, I don't know, 20 frames. Just for this, it would be, obviously it's going to be in its hundreds if you're running a long animation or even its thousands. So I'm going to just set that to 20 at the moment. And in here, I'm going to place a little um, check. And I'm going to say, if yeah if max frame count greater than sorry if frame count greater than max frame count and then we want to do something in here so colon and in here we want to put um, print message end of animation and timer dot stop and we need to pull in max frame count at the top of it as well max frame count so we pull in max frame count we set up our file name with the frame count there dot jpeg we save the image to the file name in 907 419 format um, dimensions black background increment our frame count check to see if the frame count is greater than the max frame count if it is we end the animation and then we stop the timer so what's going to happen is that you'll notice a slowdown in your screen and your animation, make sure you save it, and your animation will actually be uh, quite jerky, but that will go away 
because what we're doing is well, the reason why it's jerky is that it's a blocking um it's not asynchronous it's actually, it's actually actually synchronous so it goes through and do does that in order so if you think of disk access uh, that's going to take a bit of time for that to come back so you're literally your animation will be jogging along at a slow rate but your output file will be um smooth So we'll just run that now and we'll get straight away a syntax error. So what have I done? Invalid syntax. Frame count place plus. Why is that? Nine five. Frame count plus plus. It's not invalid. Oops. How's that valid? It's because I've got a NIF after there. I need space on the F. Might be because I need space. That's no, still a problem. Oops. Some Python like plus plus. Oh, plus equal one. Yeah. Obviously, been away from the language a bit too long. So, <laughs> normal programming languages you use plus plus to increment. Um, Python doesn't look like it likes that. So, it's I've used plus equals plus equals one. So actually added one onto there. So that was a learning experience. So if I hit enter now, what happens, you can see our position is updating. And if we look at this, we can see this is slowly going up. Um, and we've got to the end of the animation there. So let me just jump back in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put a print animation frame str frame count let's just so just shows you that there's a uh, output into screen but if we look in our directory now, our temp directory, you can see we've got a number of frames in there. So this is what we're looking for. So we've actually output the actual animation with back, blank background. We can actually change that to whatever background you want. Um, the best way if you just want the one for, that's on screen to use current. Now that's all output on into there. So that's all nice and done for you. Now I could take that and actually put it into some kind of program to actually put those together manually but we wanted to do this all uh, actually all as one um, all via the script itself. Now there's one thing that I've missed out that I need to talk about is that if you're actually placing these together in an application is that file naming. So we're looking 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way out to 20 if I view this as a list, details, I see them there. I hit name, you can actually see they are all in order. Now, when you actually load these into a some programs, I think this used to happen in Windows before um, Windows 10. Some programs still do it, is that you'll get 0, 1, 10, 2, 20, and these won't be in order. These won't be in order at all. Um, you'll have to actually go literally go into the date time of the output. Um, but we can solve that, so it's best to actually pad these up so they're all the same length. Because when we actually start using 
um, pro programs, it looks, these, looks at these as a string value. So you'll have 1, 10, 11, 12, everything for 1, and then when you get to 2, you'll have 20, 21, 20, exactly, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so we need to actually pad these up to be um, around about 4 or 5 leading zeros on front of the, uh, depending on what our highest number is. And that's quite easy with Python. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so for safety's sake, we'll do that now. So to actually pad this to allow us to have extra zero padding on front of this, so programs allow this to go actually go in order um, of the frames, we need to use a little format. So we can actually get rid of this str and get rid of the bracket. And I'm going to give myself a bit of space around there. And the format that we're going to be using goes like this. So it starts with an F, and then after the F, we have two quotes. Now in those two quotes, I'm going to place a brace and close the brace. So that is a formatter for what we're going to use. Okay, so we can use different types of formats, different paddings, etc. So if I just cut this, and what I'm going to do is place that in here, colon 08. So we've got an F, a single quote, a brace, then the variable name, a colon, and how many zeros you want to pad it with, so 08. So that will pad it with uh, eight zeros. So that's a pre-pad, not post-pad. So that should be fine. So we'll run that now. Save it. Control C. Oops. Place that in here. And run that. See how animation has been output. And I didn't clear the files, did I? No. So we'll look down here, you can see the padding now. Our files are nicely padded, so we got all the zeros to 20. So this is what we need for the output. So I can actually get rid of the others, these. So now we've got our files all nicely in the correct format. Let's go for extra, extra larger icons so we can actually see the animation. So it's a very small animation. If I roll through this quickly, you can see it actually working. Um, we need to actually output this as a AVI now. Now, I've got a batch file to do this, and I'll make that available. There'll be a link in my notes. So here's the actual batch file. Also, you need to download FFmpeg. So FFmpeg is a small executable. It's available for all platforms. I'm on Windows at the moment, so if you're using this on a different machine or a different environment, apologies, you're going to have to actually do a bit of work in the background to actually figure this one out. So FFmpeg. So here's our download. Just go to ffmpeg.org and download it for whatever platform you're using. Extract that to a directory. Um, I'll go through the process. Uh, download source code, download snapshot. Here we go. Uh, I want it on Windows. No, I don't want that this. Windows executable. Windows builds. Um, it's also pick that, download build. So that's downloaded there. And there's one file that we need out of this. And the one file that we need to extract from this archive. And that's the actual ffmpeg.exe. Obviously, as I said, if you're on different OS, it's going to have to actually find out which one you need for that environment. But I'm on Windows here, so I'll be using uh, the Windows way of doing things, which is obviously not always the correct way of doing things. So I just got my ffmpeg coming down. 
and I'm gonna open when done. Here we go. Yeah. Get rid of that. Go away. Right. So in FFmpeg, inside the bin directory, you've got this FFmpeg.exe, and what you want to do is, oh, just go back to my temp directory, and I'm just going to dump that into here. So that's extracted into the base the base of my temp directory. You could actually register this with Windows and go from there, but for speed I'm just placing it in there, the base of my temp directory. So the next thing I need to do is actually show you the batch file. Again, available from my site. I'll leave you the notes. So I've got this AVI, AVI out.bat. I'll right click and edit that. And what this shows you is that you know, I've actually created this, well, I think I actually created this batch file. I got it from the internet. I did some, some modifications to this to make this uh, to uh, make this more well, for my needs to actually sort it out for my needs. And this is the line that does the magic. Um, it will ask you for a frame rate. I'm using 25. It's up to you. Just experiment around that area. Um, but this line here, see temp fmpeg.exe, can I format font, let's bring this up a bit, okay, so there we go, so here we go, so we're looking at, it's actually asking for a frame rate, and then it goes through all the files and outputs into an image txt, um, and this is the problem again, if you've got the name from zero, one, two, three, four, the image TXT will be in the wrong order. So you need to pad those with zeros. Actually pad those with zeros to actually get them into the right order. Um, and then this line here actually does the output. And we've got a bit of, uh, are you sure in there? Because I'm going to be deleting the JPEGs afterwards. But I want to make sure that, you know, you go off and have a look and so make sure your output is there before you go into delete the JPEGs because if you've left the animation running for a couple of hours because of a lot of frames, the last thing you want to do is delete the JPEG and the JPEGs then start all over again. And then we just delete the image.txt file afterwards. So this image.txt just gets piped into uh, the actual uh, FMPEG. And the actual, it compiles an AVI for you. So if I actually ran this, um, move this to my, oops. I'm just going to copy and paste it into the temp. Run it to uh, paste it in here. Come on. Thank you. There's the AVI. I run that into the frame rate 24. Yes. Now width not divisible by, by 2. 907 by 419. So that is not good so we need to actually change the output of our screen to make sure it's divisible by two hit no for that so i'm going to i should have hit yes actually because i want to get rid of these let's get rid of these right so jump back in the output not divisible by two, so I'm going to go 800 by 600. So I know for a fact they're both divisible by two. Save that. Control A, Control C, and Control V in there. And we're outputting some animation. So this is all exciting. Let's see what we get this time. See, I haven't planned this. There we go. So we've got our animation. And if I run the bat file now, frame rate 24, overwrite the existing video. So we've got the existing video here. Yes. Brilliant. Are you sure? Yes. The files are gone. And there's our video MP4. 
all nice and there we go. Let's play that again. So that's our our actual video output to the screen. I'm going to update that back file actually. Where it goes, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? You want to delete the source JPEGs. So we know what on earth it's doing. There we go. So that's done. Now, so brilliant. So we've output the, the images to our temp folder. So what I need to do is be able to run this all in one go. So we need to actually run this, run the back file, and everything will be all done and dusted. Now you can do that, it's Python, it's possible. So just don't think this is just a scripting language, think this is Python language. So we can do virtually anything in Python language to an extent, obviously not fly. Um, as long as we've got the libraries there. Now there is a standard library that I can actually create a process to run that back file. So to do that, let's just tidy this up a bit. We need to import a library called subprocess. And what this allows you to do is actually run a process outside of FreeCAD. So this allows you to actually start up a process, i.e. a bat file, in a CMD and actually run it. So that's exactly what we need. So what I'm going to do is I've imported the subprocesses, library, import subprocess, and come down to here. And where I've got save, and this print end of animation, so in the save function, I'm going to do the time will be stopped. So just in here, I'm going to run the subprocess. And I just call subprocess dot run, and in brackets, we actually pass the file. Actually, I think it's no, it's, it's bracket and a square bracket. And in here, I need the actual location to the actual file itself. So that is on C colon slash. Now, because it's Python, I need to double up these slashes. Otherwise, it's going to take it as a special character. So we go C colon slash slash temp slash slash and the name of our bat file, which I've forgotten what it is. That file is called avi out dot bat. avi out dot bat. Close to double quotes or single quotes, whatever you want to want to use. Be consistent. Use single quotes. Close the square bracket and close the normal bracket. And that should run the sub process in the background. So what I'm going to do is actually pop into here, get rid of the video MP4. So it's all nice and clean in there. And I'm going to save this. Control A, Control C, and paste that in there. No errors, which is good. And what I'm going to do is hit Enter, and I'm going to jump into that directory. You can see our images are going in there. And what happened is that our CMD window is opened and we can enter the frame rate. So 24, hit enter. You sure you want to delete the source JPEGs? That's better. Yes. And off we go. And there we go, a video MP4. So there we go. So from start to finish, that's how to actually create a small animation and output the video to, to a folder from those animated frames using Python. So this will be actually available on my GitHub, like I said. Um, I hope that solves the mystery around there. Um, thank you for asking me the question. 
anybody else has got me que got questions for me just ask them and i will try to solve them and create a video or a respond to your comment um optimist ms thank you a lot for this this was a uh, actual nice uh, nice discovery for myself to actually go through and find this out myself as well um learn some, learn some more about freecad always learning always enhancing and it's the best thing you can do share the knowledge and i hope you all enjoyed this video